Hello and welcome to lecture number 14 in the course computer graphics. As usual, we will start by recollecting the pipeline stages which we are currently discussing. So, there are 5 stages in the 3D graphics pipeline. Now, if you may recollect this pipeline refers to the process of rendering a 2D image on a computer screen which is generated from a 3D scene. And among those 5 stages, we have seen the first stage object representation. We have also discussed modeling transformation, the second stage. Currently, we are discussing lighting or the third stage. After that, there are two more stages. One is viewing pipeline, which itself is a series of 5 sub stages and then finally, scan conversion or rendering which is the last stage. As I just mentioned, we are currently discussing the third stage that is lighting. So, the idea is that we want to assign colors to the points that are on the surface of the objects that are there in a scene. The assignment of colors to the surface points is the responsibility of the third stage that is called the lighting stage. If you may recollect in the previous lecture, we discussed the basic concepts that are there behind this coloring of surface points. First thing is lighting that is the light that comes after getting reflected from the point of interest to our eye that light determines the perception of color and this process of perceiving color by receiving the reflected light from the point of interest is called lighting. And we discussed that this lighting can be computed with the help of a simple lighting model. Today, we are going to talk about that simple lighting model. When we are referring a lighting model to be simple, that means we are trying to simplify certain things. Now, if you may recollect, lighting model refers to the modeling of the process of lighting. Now, that is clearly an optical process and when we are using the term simple to refer to a lighting model, we are essentially referring to the fact that many optical phenomena that happens in practice will be ignored. Instead, we will make some simplifying assumptions about those phenomena and then implement the lighting model. So, in order to discuss the lighting model, we will start with the basic idea that is we use the lighting models to compute colors at the surface points. So, essentially the job of the lighting model is to enable us to compute colors at the points of interest. If you may recollect in the introductory lecture we mentioned there are broadly two components that determine the color. One is light source, other one is surface properties. Now, for simplicity, let us start by assuming that there is a single light source which is monochromatic and a point light source. Monochromatic means it has only one color component and it is a point light source. If you recollect, we discussed point light source that are dimensionless and characterized by only position as well as the intensity of the emitted light. So, when we are assuming a monochromatic single point light source, then how the model will look like? Let us try to derive it. In order to do so, let us revisit our idea of perceiving a color. 
the process involved in perceiving a color. So, this is a light source in the figure. Now, as you can see on the cube, this is the point of interest. At this point, we want to compute the color. Now, color perception we get after we receive the light that gets reflected from that point to our eye or the viewer's eye. Now, this light is a combination of two incident lights. One comes directly from the light source, this is direct light. One comes after getting reflected from a secondary object, this is we call ambient light. So, there are these two components direct light and ambient light. So, we can say that this reflected light intensity can be approximated as a sum of intensities of the two incident lights that is ambient light and direct reflection. That is the assumption, simplifying assumption that we are making. Now, this reflection from a point can occur in two ways. One type of reflection is called diffuse reflection and the other type is called specular reflection. So, we have two types of reflections, one is diffuse reflection, other one is specular reflection. Let us try to understand these different types of reflections with respect to one illustrative example. Look at the figure here. As you can see on this object, different colors are there at different points. This region is having slightly dark color and this color comes from ambient reflection. Above this region, we have slightly brighter color excluding the central region. This whole region excluding the central region is having somewhat brighter color that is called diffuse reflection. Now, diffuse reflection is defined as given here that when incident light tends to reflect in all directions from a rough or grainy surface, then we get to see diffuse reflection. Now, we assume that both reflection from direct light source as well as ambient light can result in diffuse reflection. So, ambient and diffuse technically both are same diffuse reflection, but we will differentiate between the two. By the term diffuse, we mean diffuse reflection due to direct light and by the term ambient, we mean diffuse reflection due to ambient light. For a shiny or smooth surface, we see a different sort of reflection that is light gets reflected in specific direction or region and if a viewer is situated within that region, then the viewer gets to see a bright spot. You can see here in this figure, this zone, the color in this zone is completely different from the surrounding surface regions. This is a bright spot and this results due to another type of reflection. Now, this reflection is called specular reflection. So, we have this third type of reflection, specular reflection. So, we have diffuse reflection due to ambient light which gives us this dark color, somewhat dark color. Then diffuse reflection due to direct light source which gives us somewhat lighter color 
and finally, specular reflection which gives us this bright spots. So, in light of this knowledge, let us now try to derive the simple model. So, in the simple model then we have three components. One component is due to the diffuse reflection of ambient light, one component is due to the diffuse reflection of direct light and the third component is due to the specular reflection of direct light that is incident at that point. So, we can actually model the light intensity that reaches to the viewer from the surface point that is of interest to us as a sum of three intensities. What are these three intensities? Intensity due to ambient light, intensity due to diffuse light and intensity due to specular light. Now, when I say intensity due to ambient light, I mean to say the diffuse reflection of ambient light. When I say intensity due to diffuse light, I mean to say diffuse reflection of direct light and when I say specular light, I mean to say specular reflection due to direct light. So, the intensity at the point is a sum of these three intensities, which we denote by these terms I m, I diff and I spec. Now, those are the components. Now, how to get those components? So, one assumption is that reflected light intensity is a fraction of incident light intensity. How to decide on this fraction? It is determined by a surface property which is known as the reflection coefficient or reflectivity. Now, recollect in our earlier lecture we discussed about two determinants for color, one is light source, other one is surface property. Now, we are bringing in the surface property here. So, we are assuming that the reflected light is a fraction of the incident light and the fraction is determined by one surface property that is the reflectivity or the reflection coefficient. Now, in order to control the lighting effect in our computation, we define three such reflection coefficients, one each for the three types of lights. So, one coefficient for diffuse reflection due to direct light, one coefficient for diffuse reflection due to ambient light and one coefficient for specular reflection due to direct light. So, diffuse reflection coefficient due to ambient light is denoted by k a, diffuse reflection coefficient due to direct light is denoted by k d and specular reflection coefficient due to direct light is denoted by k s. So, we are defining these three coefficients and we are also specifying the values that these coefficients can take. It is defined as a range. These coefficients can take values within the range 0 0.0 to 1.0. Now, when we are specifying the value to be 0, 0.0, it represents a dull surface with no reflection. So, everything will be absorbed and when we are specifying the value 1.0, it represents the shiniest surface with full reflection that is whatever gets incident to that point will be fully reflected from that point. So, it reflects all the incident light. By varying these values, we can actually control the amount of dullness or shininess of the 
surface of interest. Now, as I said, there are three components which determines the color. One is the ambient light component, one is the diffuse reflection component due to direct light and one is the specular reflection component due to direct light. So, let us try to model this individual components one by one. We will start with the ambient light component which is the simplest to model and actually we will be making a very, very simplifying assumption in this case. So, here we will assume that every surface is fully illuminated by an ambient light with intensity I A. So, that is our simplifying assumption that all points are getting illuminated by the same ambient light intensity I A. So, we will not consider complex optical behavior of light after getting reflected from surrounding surfaces. We will instead make a very, very simplifying assumption that any point gets illuminated by a single intensity I A representing the ambient light. So, essentially we are modeling ambient light as a single light source with intensity I A. And we have already defined the reflectivity or reflective coefficient for ambient light. Now, if the light that is incident at a point is I A, then the reflected light we can compute based on the assumption will be the incident light multiplied by the coefficient. So, that will give us the ambient light component of the color. This is our simple model for ambient light. So, with this model we can compute the intensity contribution due to ambient light in the overall intensity which gives us the color. Then we have the second component that is diffuse reflection component due to direct light source. Now, in order to model this component we make another assumption this is about how the surface reflects the incident light. So, we assume that all the surfaces in the scene are ideal diffuse reflectors or more popularly these are called Lambertian reflectors. Now, this follows the Lambert's cosine law. So, all the surfaces follow this law which states that energy reflected by a small portion of a surface from a light source in a given direction is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the direction and the surface normal. This is the Lambert's cosine law. Now, as per this law what we can infer? The law implies that amount of incident light from a light source on a Lambertian surface is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the surface normal and the direction of the incident light. Now, if we assume that this is the point of interest in the right hand figure, then this law the Lambert's cosine law indicates that the amount of incident light from a light source on a Lambertian surface is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the surface normal and the direction of the incident light. Now, this angle is called angle of incidence. Based on this let us assume a direct light source with intensity I s. 
and the angle of incidence at the point is denoted by theta. Then we can say that amount of light incident at that point according to the Lambert's law is I s cos theta as we have just seen as per the law. Now, if that is the incident light, we also know that a fraction of this light is reflected and reaches the viewer's eye and that fraction is determined by the diffuse reflectivity or the diffuse reflection coefficient for direct light which we are denoting by k d. So, then the amount of light that gets reflected can be modeled with this expression and this will be the contribution of the diffuse reflection due to direct light to the overall intensity. This will be our expression to compute the diffuse reflection component to the overall intensity value. Now, we can represent the same expression in different way. Let us assume L and N denotes the unit direction vector to the light source from the point and the unit surface normal vector respectively. So, L denotes the unit direction vector to the light source from the point of interest and N denotes the surface normal vector at that point. Then the same expression we can rewrite in this way because we know that we can represent cos theta as a vector dot product in terms of the two unit vectors n dot l. So, if n dot l is greater than 0, then we have the diffuse reflection component denoted by this expression and if it is less than equal to 0, then it is 0. This is another way of writing the same expression and we will follow this expression or this representation. So, we have modeled the two components and the third component is the one that is remaining which is modeling specular reflection component. Now, this component we will model with some empirical derivation which we will see later and this empirically derived model was proposed by Bui Tuong Fong way back in 1973 and we shall use that model which is also known as Fong specular reflection model. So, we will be using this model in our simple lighting model. So, what this model tells us? The assumption is specular reflection intensity is proportional to cosine of the angle between viewing and specular reflection vector raised to a power that is the empirically derived law so to say. So, in this Fong model empirically it has been found that we can model specular reflection intensity as proportional to the cosine of the angle between the viewing and the specular reflection vectors raised to a power. Now, V is the viewing vector and 
if r is the specular reflection vector and the angle between them is phi as shown here, then according to this empirically derived formula, we can say specular reflection component is proportional to this expression, where phi is defined within this range 0 degree and 90 degree. Now, the term n s which is the power is called specular reflection exponent and by using this exponent judiciously, we can generate different effects and by varying the value of course, if the value is larger greater than 100, then it can generate shiny surface effect. If the value is close to 1, it generates rough surface effect. Like in case of diffuse reflection, in case of specular reflection also, we can have vector representation of the same expression. First, let us see the actual expression to compute specular reflection component. Now, as we have said, this component is the amount of incident light, k d is the specular reflectivity. So, the actual component is given by earlier we said I specular is proportional to this component and this proportionality constant is the k d. So, the actual component is k d multiplied by the expression. Now, we know that cos phi can be represented by a vector dot product v and r where v and r represent the unit vectors along the viewing direction and the specular reflection direction. So, by using this expression, we can say or we can represent the specular component in terms of vector product in this way. Now, if v dot r is greater than 0, then we have this component to compute specular component and if v dot r is less than equal to 0, then we have 0. Also, to make the expression more compatible with the previous expressions that we have seen, we will replace r in terms of the other vectors l and n. L is the vector direction towards light source, n is the surface normal. So, if we use this expression for r, then all our reflection components both diffuse reflection as well as specular reflection due to direct light can be computed only in terms of l and n rather than l and n in one case and v and r in another case. So, in case of diffuse reflection due to direct light source, we have L and N. In case of specular reflection due to direct light source, we have L, N as well as V, the viewing direction and we are replacing R with L and N. So, these three are the three components that we can use to compute the overall intensity of the reflected light from the point of interest. There is another interesting thing which is called intensity attenuation. Now, in our computations that we have discussed earlier, we assumed that the light intensity does not change as it moves from the source to the surface point. 
So, the intensity after getting emitted at source and the intensity when it is incident at a point which is some distance away from the source, we are assuming both are same. What is the problem with that assumption? If we make such assumption, then what will happen? Assume there are two surface points, one is closer to the source and the other is slightly further away. Now, intensity of the light received by either of these points will be the same because we are not assuming any change in intensity in the incident light depending on the distance. Then the color computed using our simple lighting model will also be the same. So, nowhere in the computation we are taking into account the distance travelled by the light explicitly. Then the color computed will also be the same and as a result we will not be able to identify or perceive the relative difference in distance between the two points. So, all surfaces will be illuminated with equal intensities irrespective of their distance which will lead to indistinguishable overlapping of surfaces when projected on screen. So, we will not be able to understand the distance between them which will reduce the perception of 3D. In order to address this issue, we incorporate something called intensity attenuation in our model in the form of attenuation factors. Now, there are two such factors, one is radial attenuation factor and other one is angular attenuation factor. Radial attenuation factor denoted by A f rad and angular factor denoted by A f ang. Now, radial factor accounts for the effect of diminishing light intensity over distance and we model it using an inverse quadratic function shown here where a 0, a 1, a 2 are coefficients that we can vary to produce better realistic effects and d is the distance between source and surface point. So, by using this inverse quadratic function, we can take into account the effect of distance on the intensity. The other attenuation factor is angular attenuation. So, in this case, we use it primarily to generate the spotlight effect. So, there are many ways to do this of course, but one commonly used function is shown here. With this function, we can actually take into account the angular attenuation. So, further away from this axis a point is, it will receive reduced intensities and that reduction in intensity with respect to the axis, cone axis, spotlight cone axis can be computed using this expression. It will be 0 if the surface point is outside the angular limit theta. So, if some point is here which is outside this limit, then of course, it is not likely to be getting influenced by the spotlight. So, the overall component will be 0, but if it is within this limit say somewhere here, then depending on its angle and the with respect to the axis, we can compute using this expression, where phi is the angle that this point makes with the cone axis. 
Now taking into account this attenuation, so our simple lighting model will change. Earlier we had the model as a sum of three components I m, I diffuse and I spec. Now we are taking into account the attenuation factor and then we are modifying the form. So it now takes the form of I p equal to I m plus these two are multiplied to the diffuse and specular component, sum of the diffuse and specular components. So, A f rad denotes the attenuation factor, radial attenuation factor and A f ang denotes the angular attenuation factor. Now, if these values are set to 1, then of course, as you can see, we are eliminating the attenuation effect and some value other than 1 will include the effect. So, that is all about monochromatic point light source. Now, let us assume colored source. What will happen in that case? So, in case of monochromatic light, we generate different sets of gray. Now, if we have to generate color images, then we need to consider colored light source. Now, as we have discussed earlier in the introductory lecture, when we are talking of color, we are assuming that there are three primary colors, red, green and blue. They together give us the perception of a particular color. Accordingly, we can assume that the source light intensity is a, a three element vector. So, source intensity has three component intensities, one for red, one for green, one for blue. Similarly, reflection coefficients also have components. Each coefficient is a vector having three co coefficients, one each for each of the color. So, one for red, one for green, one for blue for each of the coefficients for k, k, d and k, s. So, this is the only modification we made in order to take into account colored light sources. Then we compute each color component separately using the light model with appropriate source intensity and coefficient values. So, for computing the component for red, we use the red source intensity as well as the reflective coefficients for red, similarly for green and blue. That is the modification. And finally, let us assume that there are more than one light sources. In that case, what will happen? Again, a simple extension. So, earlier we had only this component plus this component. Now, we are introducing a summation component here. So, for each of the source, we will compute this component and then we will add it up for all the n light sources. Note that ambient component will not change because it is the same for all with a single ambient light intensity. The change is only for the components due to direct light, namely diffuse component and the specular reflection component. So, this is the overall simple lighting model in general for multiple sources and if we want to have color, then we will simply have I p r I p g and I p b for red, green, blue, where these coefficients for ambient light as well as diffuse reflection coefficients will be chosen according to the specific color component. So, we will have three separate values giving us a three element 
output. So that is in summary our overall simple lighting model. So to summarize, we have discussed a simple model assuming that there is one point light source. Initially, we assumed monochromatic, then we assumed that there are colored light sources and initially we assumed single light source, then we assumed that there are multiple light sources, but in all the cases we assumed that it is a point light source. So, a dimensionless light source characterized by only position and intensity. Another thing that you should note here is that the simplifying assumptions we made. So, to compute ambient light, we assumed that there is a single ambient light intensity, which is not true in practice. To compute diffused light component due to direct light, we assumed that Lambertian surfaces are there, which again need not be true in practice. And to compute specular component, we assumed an empirically derived model, the Fong specular model, which does not reflect the actual optical behavior. But in spite of these assumptions, whatever we get gives us a working solution to our problem of computing color, which works in practice. So, although it does not reflect the actual optical behavior, it gives us a working solution. And due to these many simplifying assumptions, we are calling it simple lighting model. In order to discuss this simple lighting model, we left out many important topics which actually are designed to take into account the actual optical behavior which in turn gives us even better, much, much better realistic effects which is expected, but at the cost of increased, heavily increased computation. To know more about such models, you may refer to the material that will be mentioned in the next slide. So, with this we conclude our discussion on the simple lighting model. As I said, to learn more about this, you may refer to this book, refer to chapter 4, section 4.2 to learn in more details the topics that I have discussed today and also you may refer to the reference material mentioned in that book and in the chapter for more details on the more realistic lighting models which are much more complex than the simple model. So, with this I conclude today's lecture. Thank you and goodbye.